Good morning. I'm Jason Schulist. Um, I'd like to introduce our next presenter, uh, Jeremiah Davis. So his uh, day job is manufacturing engineer at ADEC, um, which is in Oregon. And I know how to say Oregon, even though I'm not from Oregon. Um, manufacturing dental equipment, um, and his focus is coaching and training. But his real focus is really, you know, scientific thinking being creative thinking. It's really how do you apply this when you breathe, when you do what you do, not at work. And so um, his innovation and creativity is something that we've seen a couple kata conferences ago. We saw a video last year, so he's multimedia. And now we'll see what he brings today. Thank you. I started as a learner in the improvement kata in 2011. Uh, in 2013, I brought the improvement kata home to my family, and I started teaching it to my children. With my learning, with working with both adults and children, I've found that a better place to start teaching this scientific method is with the next generation. Because ultimately, they're going to be the future of continuous improvement. And practicing the improvement kata is going to help them get the skills they need to be successful. A lot of our culture and mindset is developed as we're growing up, how we're raised. As we get older, we become more set in our ways. Change is more difficult. If we were to teach continuous improvement to children, that would become part of their culture. So as they grew, it would be there already. And if we were teaching improvement kata in school or at home, then the mindset would be there when they got into the workplace. Prior to my experience with continuous improvement, anything involving lean was an event. We'd spend three to five days working on improving something. And with my experience, ultimately, things went back to the way they were. I think part of the reason that happened was we didn't have clear direction. We didn't have a real purpose for why we were doing these things. It was, this area is messy, let's do a, a 5S event to get it clean. But then we fell short on five, right? We fell short on the sustaining part because we didn't have that direction. And don't get me wrong, I love the tools I was learning, the tools I was using. And there's a lot of great benefits to these tools. But I think at some point while practicing the improvement kata, I recognized that a lot of what we were doing prior was waste itself. What improvement kata did was it gave us this... Uh, structured and disciplined way to practice continuous improvement, right? Uh, by having that big goal that we were trying to achieve, it gave us that direction now. We have this direction. If we can understand what we really want to accomplish, then we can start establishing that current condition, the current state, where we are right now. Based off of this information, we're going to set that mini goal on the way, that target condition that's on the path to reaching that challenge. This part here is where I usually find adults struggle. And I've heard some other people talk about this as well. Adults will jump straight to knowing what they want to do next. So either the current condition part falls short or they collect information to support what they wanted to do next. Children don't do that. Children will take the time collecting that information. They don't have it in their mind what they want to do next. They, don't, they just collect the data. The data drives what they're going to do next, which is how it should be. So once we have established that target condition, now we're going to start experimenting towards reaching that target condition. We will do this again and again and again until we reach that challenge. This is the pattern we're going to follow. As adults, your already developed brains makes it more difficult for you to learn new things. Because of this, you have what is referred to as functional fixedness. And what that means is you see things as they are. For instance, what is this? Sword. It is a Nerf sword. So my boys and I like to play fight. We play fight all the time. So I bought these swords thinking, hey, this is going to be fun to play fight with these. And uh, I bring them home, and I go to play fight with my stepson. Here we go. We're getting ready. And I notice he's holding it this way. 
And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, that's not very smart. You're holding that razor sharp edge. You're going to cut yourself. And he looks at me like I'm dumb. <laughs> Says, that's not the blade, that's the handle. And this is a battle axe. <laughs> Keep in mind, he knows what a sword is, but for some reason he's seeing something I'm not seeing here. This is a battle axe, he says. But not only is it a battle axe, he says, it's a crossbow. The, the blades are actually a crossbow. And there's a groove in here where the arrow sits. So what he's seeing now is this. And not only, he says, is it a crossbow with a battle axe, it's also a taser. You can't touch this side or it'll shock you. <laughs> so, at this point, I'm standing there with a sword and recognizing I've been outweaponed. <laughs> but we decide to fight anyways. And uh, as we're going, I quickly recognize I'm not doing so hot because I can't get close enough to him without being shot by these arrows. And as I'm coming to life for the sixth time on the ground... He comes over and starts shocking me, and then I quit. I was like, yeah, this isn't working for me. So, what's going on here is a child's developing mind can be creative. They're flexible and inventive with what they see in things. You and I, we see a sword. He quickly saw so much more potential in this tool than what we can see. What this tells us is... A child's mind is designed to learn. And adults' minds are designed to perform. As I've introduced lean into the workplace, I've found that uh, the older the person that I'm working with, the more difficult time they have grasping lean concepts. And it's not every single case, but that's what I found typically. The great news is, is that if we can get them to practice no matter what age they're at, if we can get them to practice that routine we were talking about, I have success in teaching them, right? So without that practice, no success. With practice, success. Sometimes it's still difficult getting them to practice a new routine because they don't want to, maybe. But if they practice it, then even those other lean tools are easy to teach because now... They're plug and play into helping them reach a target condition, right? Or the challenge. So it actually puts purpose behind that. It's not just clean this up because it's dirty. It's clean this up because it's going to improve time standard of something, right? With millennials or young adults, I've usually found that they're resistant to practice in the beginning, but quickly flip and actually really thrive on the practice. If you miss a, a coaching cycle, they're coming looking for you and saying, let's do this, come on. So I find this age group really likes it. And I think part of that is because it's very fast paced and it gives lots of recognition, instant recognition for what they're learning, right? So I personally, uh, just like Joe, have had great success in empowering young adults through a coaching kata. We all start our lives as natural scientists, and this is why I believe that children are the easiest of all the age groups to coach. Pre-puberty. I've more recently discovered <laughs> that uh, during puberty, all rational brain goes right out the door. So, But I do think if the dynamic, even in that situation, was different, if it wasn't parent-child, parent instead teacher-student, it seems that family and puberty don't go together so well. So I think if the dynamic was different, you'd have more success. I have a coaching cycle to show you guys. Uh, my step stepdaughter, Haley, as a learner, myself as a coach. She's going to work, walk you through the current uh, challenge that we're all working towards uh, through this video. So Haley, what is your challenge? My challenge is building $100,000 for down payment. Okay. Can you expand on that a little bit? Um, we're trying to build $100,000 for down payment for the house that we're currently um, that we're currently remodeling. What's the purpose of the $100,000? Um, 
We're going to use the hundred thousand dollars to buy a new, better home for us. What target condition are you working towards? Right now, I'm working towards um, that there is plenty of light in the living room. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what is your current condition? Our current condition <clears throat> is that all bedroom light fixtures have been upgraded. Four out of five main living space lights have been upgraded. Nine out of twenty-five receptacles have been upgraded. Six out of sixteen light switches have been upgraded. The living room is too dark, and a breaker is tripping from overload. What was your last completed step? My last completed step was to put up the light in the living room. And what did you expect from that? I expected that it would take about 25 to 30 minutes. And what actually happened? We were unable to finish. Oh. So what did you learn? Um, I learned that the reason we couldn't finish was because we didn't have the right screws to put up the, bolt, or the, the light. What are some other previous steps that you've completed? Other previous steps that I've completed could include finding out which direction the power is flowing and the light switch that we need to use for the light that we're putting up. Um, I also, another step was to run a wire from that switch to the attic and another one was to create a space for the light that we're putting up. Did you have any interesting learnings through any of that? Um, in my first step, which was to find out if the unknown switch had power going to it, we learned that there was there were wires going up to the attic and below the switch, but we didn't know where the power is coming from. And then in the next step, we f it was to find out which direction the power was going, and we found out that the power flows to a light down the hall. What obstacles are preventing you still from reaching that target condition? Um, we have one obstacle preventing us from reaching our target condition, and that is that we don't have the correct screws to put up the light. So what's your next step then? My next step is to get the correct screws and finish installing the light fixture. What do you expect from that step? I expect to have reached my target condition. And when can I see what you learned? Uh, today. So what I want you guys to notice is that Haley is already fluent in the scientific approach. It's very natural and flowing for her. But even more important, there's no defensiveness. Her eyes are on the goal and, and overcoming the problem she's currently working on, right? This is what we want to see in young people because ultimately this is what we want to see in adults. We are by no means a perfect family. Just like any family, we have our problems, and lately it seems like we've been buried in them. Coaching cycles right now are very dependent on moods. Times three. Um, more recently, we've moved to a, a recognition of before coaching, let's check moods to make sure we're going to be successful or not successful in that coaching cycle. And if it's if a mood is as so that we wouldn't be successful, we're going to go ahead and skip tonight. Unfortunately, what that does is it does push the target conditions out. We don't get there as fast. However, we do get less of these blow-ups that we were getting before, right? So forcing when they weren't in the mood to, to do a coaching cycle, didn't usually end well. Uh, and we couldn't make it through a full coaching cycle without an uh, explosion. So what I do is I still continue to practice. I'll still keep working on something. Some, one of us has to be working towards a target condition to get to that challenge, right? So even when the kids are mismatching, I'm still learning. And then I have them coach me, because even when they're in a bad mood, they're more than willing to coach me. <laughs> so through this last challenge, we have learned a ton as a family. Uh, sometimes it's been things that I wish that I could have seen coming. That's a nail going through my thumb. But even through all of the ups and downs we've experienced on our way to reaching this challenge, I'm incredibly proud of all of the target conditions we've achieved. And I know that we'll be successful because the, these guys have this pattern. They have this way of thinking. So I, could, I feel confident enough I could walk away and we'd still be successful. One day... I imagine 
a work environment where the only obstacles I'm ever faced against are only towards the target condition that I'm working towards and not the people who are resistant to change, the people who are pushing back. That's going to happen with the next generation. Your children and your grandchildren are going to be the future of continuous improvement. And practicing the improvement kata is going to help them get the skills they need to go where they want to go. Thank you.